Christ Church, how are you this morning? Oh, I said, how are you this morning? Yes. Yes. So we have a new song that we want to teach you all. Uh, but before we do, let's just invite the Holy Spirit. Well, the Holy Spirit is already here, and we just want to acknowledge that he is here. So wherever you are, just pray that God comes, that he's here. Lord, we welcome you. We thank you for being so good. We thank you for being mighty. We thank you for being wonderful. We thank you for being powerful. We thank you that you are the God of gods. You are the great I am. The holy one. The magnificent one. Omnipresent. Omniscient. All-knowing. Thank you for being good. We raise a hallelujah. We say that you are good. You are good. You are mighty. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. So you have a very simple part. Your part goes just like this. Repeat after me. Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord, you're mighty.
How many of you all believe we serve a mighty God? Yeah. He's been so, so good to us, and we worship and adore him, as the song says. My name is Pastor Greg, and I have the honor of welcoming you this morning, those that are in the room and those that are watching online. I was thinking about that word, welcome. It is a compound word made up of two words, well and calm. And as we come today to worship together, we pray that it is well well in your home, well in your life, well in your body, all the things that concern you today. We pray as we come that it is well. And we can believe and trust that because we serve a mighty God. Amen. Amen. Would you join me this morning for our opening psalm, Psalm 145. You see the verses there on the screen. Let's read these verses together. I will exalt you, my God and King and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. I will meditate of your majestic glorious splendor and your wonderful miracles. Your awe-inspiring deeds will be on every tongue. I will proclaim your greatness. Everyone will share the story of your wonderful goodness. They will sing with joy about your righteousness. For your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. You rule throughout all generations. The Lord always keeps his promises. Let's pause there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's keep reading. He is gracious in all he does. The Lord helps the fallen and lifts those bent beneath their loads. The Lord is close to all who call on him. Yes, to all who call on him in truth. I will praise the Lord, and may everyone on earth bless his holy name forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
As the psalmist said, let every generation tell its children of the great and mighty deeds of God. And so today, we have the blessing and the privilege, and it is a privilege in the truest sense. Uh, we're going to dedicate two little ones to the Lord this morning. So you can be seated for just a moment if you'd like. And I want to invite our families, these two families, to come forward. They're going to come right front and center here. And grandparents and parents and aunts and uncles and in-laws and outlaws, y'all come. Come on up here. We're going to bring you right, right in the center, right in the center. Of course, Christy Polster, our children's director, is up here with us. And anyone else that's uh, connected to these families or would like to come to stand with them, and we'll have a time to pray, of course, as part of this dedication as well. But all right. It's a good-looking bunch, isn't it? For sure. Yeah. <laughs> so we have two young, young ladies here this morning uh, to... Our right, she's clapping already right now. That's awesome. This is Salem Cherie Squires with her family. Yeah. Beautiful, Salem. And then to our left, of course, is Lucy Lynn Cunningham. Now, both of these ladies look, look beautiful in their, in their dresses, of course, this morning, but one thing that I want to point out about uh, Lucy's dress is that her grandfather, sharp-looking man here in the tie, he, his father, if I understand correctly, was, was christened in that same gown over 100 years ago. Over 100 years ago. So what a beautiful way to represent generation to generation to generation. Amen. That's a powerful, powerful image right there. And so, well, today we are honored to share in this time with each and every one of you, these beautiful families and these beautiful young ladies. And we're reminded from scripture, according to Luke's gospel, chapter two, that when the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought the infant Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, and he was looking for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And he was inspired by the Spirit to come into the temple, and when he saw these parents who brought in their child, Jesus, to do for him according to the custom of the law, Simeon took that child up in his arms and blessed God. My friends, the privilege of parenthood is a God-given gift, and you will be responsible to him for the way you raise this child. Fitting it is, therefore, that you have come this day to present your daughter for the blessing of God, to dedicate this little one to the one who has made her, and to dedicate yourselves as Christian parents before the Lord together. So to you, parents, I ask you, as a household of faith in the family of God, we members of this church, we congratulate you as you bring these children of your love and the love of the Heavenly Father together this morning. We wish each of you to feel in your heart that you are doing a very important thing, so important as you present your children to the Lord in this sanctuary among some of his people, even as the child Jesus was presented by his parents 2,000 years ago in the temple. So be assured that God is pleased with this beautiful observance of that ancient custom and know in your heart that God will hear every prayer for these children who are dedicated unto him on this day. Remember, these children belong to him before they belong to you. And as much as you love this little one, he loves her even more. The Lord not only sees her as his child, but certainly as you as his children as well. And so what a blessing it is as we all come together as children of the Lord in this way in Christ to dedicate these two young ladies. So now church, as members of the church of Jesus Christ, do you receive these children in the name of the Lord and promise to be under them fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters and friends in the faith? Will you, as a family of faith, dedicate yourselves to the care and encouragement edification and fortification of these children in the faith and will you pray for and with these children will you encourage them and support them in word and deed in the calling and raising of these children that they may learn to walk in the way of Jesus Christ 
That means an encouraging word. It means teaching Sunday school. It means helping out at VBS. It means calling these parents when times are difficult and making sure they're doing okay. Church, that's what it means to be a family of faith and looking out for and loving each other. And if you're willing and able to do this, may you signify it by saying, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we do. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we do. Amen. So parents, again, grandparents, aunts and uncles, now do you dedicate this child unto the Lord God? And do you promise as an elder child of your heavenly father to pray for and with these children, to teach them, and to lead them that you and they together may grow in the knowledge and love of God. You may signify by saying, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we do. Do you rededicate your homes as a sacred sanctuary and commit to creating a Christian environment in which the spiritual nature of your child may grow and unfold? Do you promise to do all you can by precept and example, knowing we make mistakes and our Father is willing and able to forgive us, but leading our child at the proper time and at the proper age to make a public confession of the Lord Jesus Christ, that our faith may become her own and that your child may live as a child of God in obedience to his will, following in the way of Jesus Christ as a disciple all the days of her life. If you agree to this, may you signify by saying, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we do. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we do. Amen. And so at this time, we're going to anoint these beautiful children. And Christy has some olive oil, and she will anoint their little foreheads with the sign of the cross that they may have the mind of Christ as they grow to better know him. And she will anoint their hands with the sign of the cross that they may grow to do the work of Christ upon their lives. And she will anoint their feet with the sign of the cross, that they may walk in the way of Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, to the glory of God the Father. time as we pray over these families. I know Pastor Jackie is with us, and Christy, go ahead and stay on up here. And any other uh, pastors or anyone else, if you're someone that is uh, connected to these families or, or just want to come forward and, and help surround them, uh, feel free to do that this time as we, we pray. So feel free. Anyone who feels led. All right. Let's pray. Let's pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks and we give you praise for the gift of your love and the gift of your life that we see in children in such a special and distinctive way. We come to celebrate life today. And there is nothing that, that, that makes us recognize newness of life like that of a new life in these beautiful little girls, Lord. So we pray your blessing, your hand upon little Salem and upon little Lucy. Lord, we are thankful for their lives. We're thankful for their health. We're thankful for the, the light that you have placed within them, Lord, that now we pray as, as their families dedicate them unto you, as, as this local church body dedicates them unto you, Lord, that we give back to you the gift that you have given in these two precious little children, that you will raise them up, that you will empower these families to hear your voice and respond in accordance with your word, Lord, that your spirit will fill them, that your spirit will bless and come consecrate their homes, that these children will grow to know you and to better walk in your ways, to love you and serve you all the days of their lives as they better know how much you have first loved them and how much you have served us in and through the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, in and through the sending of you, Holy Spirit, that we now call upon to edify and to fortify and to nourish us in your life, your light, and your love. Lord, give these parents wisdom. It is not easy to raise children in our world today, Lord, and we know how dependent we are upon you and upon our brothers and sisters in Christ, our family of faith. So, Lord, let us, 
love and serve these families well. And as we all do this together, Lord, let us love and serve you well with gratitude for these gifts that you have given that we now dedicate back unto you. In the name above all names, the one by whom and through whom, Lord, as we have been born into Adam, we are now reborn into Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. Let's welcome them one more time.
God, thank you for being great. Thank you for being good. We thank you for your name. Thank you for your word. Just sing your own song to the Lord. However he's leading you, sing your own song to God. Pray a prayer you need to pray. Worship him however you need to worship. in that song are just my favorite when it says you have no rival and you have no equal and I think it uh, it can be easy to think that this is some kind of a competition like it's it's easy to to fall into the idea that Satan he's an enemy but like he's just the villain and he's almost as powerful as God is, you know? <laughs> and it's like, that's not even close. Not even a little bit. And I just, I love that. It's not some kind of superhero story where the hero and the villain fight and it's hard for the hero. He wins at the end of it, but like, it's hard. It's not hard. <laughs> God is good, you know? Death could not hold you, veil tore before you, the silence of us of sin and faith. The heavens are roaring. The heavens are roaring. Praise of your glory. The praise of your glory. You are raised. How? For you are raised.
Oh, oh.
there's something about the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord, we find hope. And so some people have come in hopeless this morning. In the presence of the Lord, we find joy. And some people came in with a low, low level of joy this morning. In the presence of the Lord, we find healing. And so we, we engage the power of the Lord, the presence of the Lord. We don't leave the same. We don't leave the same. for your presence. I'm grateful that we serve a God that tabernacles with his people. If you would, and as you can, be seated in his presence. Thank you, worship team. I am Jennifer Lusher, and I serve as one of the pastors here at Christ Church, uh, Nashville. Um, And we are so grateful to have you joining us in worship, as we said before. Um, We want to give you an opportunity to connect uh, with what is happening in the life of our church. And not just that, it's an opportunity for us to connect with each of you. And so if you are new or if this is your first time worshiping with us or if you're joining with us online and you would love to connect with us, we want to connect with you. And the best way to do that is you can text CONNECT. 615-205-1098. That's 615-205-1098. This is, the heart behind this is not about just plugging you into the life of the church. The heart of this is for us to connect with you, to learn more about you, your giftings, your graces, and what God may be calling you to or what he could be leading you to do, uh, but also to walk alongside you in that. Uh, So please text that number to connect with us. And in addition, uh, we have two announcements. And so as we've worshiped so powerfully uh, in the next few days, in the next few days, yeah, uh, Wednesday. So in the next few days, we will have an opportunity to gather together for corporate worship. It's Wednesday, May 3rd at 6.30 p.m. Uh, So we'd love for you to join us. It's a time to gather. It's a time to worship in unity. Uh, So we'd love to have you join us uh, for that. I believe we will have a meal beforehand, and then we will come down and worship together. So we invite you to do that. And then finally, um, we are quickly moving towards Windshape Camps. Windshape is the nonprofit of Chick-fil-A. And so they are partnering with us to reach about 170 kids in our city. 170 kids in our city. And so if you think about it, it's, it's like summer camp when our kids go away to day camp, to overnight camp, but it's a day camp here. It runs 8 a.m. until about 5 p.m. Uh, that during the day. And uh, we, they bring 30 college students onto our campus and they completely transform what is happening. And I asked someone this past week, why Windshape? And she said, if you want children to be connected to the gospel, in the most intentional way that you've ever seen it before. You want your kids to come to Windshape. You want to support Windshape. So we have an opportunity to reach out to tons and tons of kids in our community. We'd love for you to consider ways to serve and volunteer, but we'd also just covet your prayers. So if you know of a child, if you know of someone who might be interested in joining us, if you will give anyone on our team their name, we can reach out to them and move from there. The best way to connect with Windshape is to go to windshapenashville.com and it will tell you everything you need to know about Windshade. We were given a really unique opportunity to walk alongside uh, one community, uh, one group of a community here in Nashville. And so we'd love to partner with you guys as we continue that work. So uh, we'd love to partner and, and have you be a part of that. All right. Thank you guys. Didn't help you down, but you're too fast. It's all right. Okay. Can I steal the mic from you though? <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Jeff. Come on up. I want to introduce you all to uh, Miss Laura Yaki. We're going to go up here, Laura. We're going to jump up here. 
and we're so honored to have Laura with us today. Laura is uh, with Love Alive International. This is a, a missions group that is based in Rwanda, and she is uh, a new missions partner with us as of this year with Christ Church Nashville. And as she describes who they are and what they do, I think you'll see why uh, it's such a good fit for what our congregation is is doing and, and what they're doing uh, halfway across the world. So, so Laura, welcome. So glad to have you here. And, Give her a round of applause. Yeah. And so with her being stateside for just a little while, we wanted to make sure to in include her this morning. So, so tell us a little bit about uh, Love Alive and, sure. and where that emphasis lies and how, uh, just how we can know more about you. Um, well, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. As Pastor said, my name is Laura. The picture you see right now is a picture of my husband and me, our son Blaze. My son Blaze is here with me today. Um, we have been in the country of Rwanda for the past 10 years, and I hear that you have someone in your congregation, Fatima, is somewhere, and she's from Rwanda, so I would love to meet you afterwards. Um, but we've been there for 10 years. The point of Love Alive App International is to share the love of Christ, both in word and deed, and that by ministry and often humanitarian help. Um, um, partnering with local churches, people will see Christ's love in us. They will see his salvation, and uh, they will be brought to him. So um, that is our purpose in a nutshell, and uh, we work with a lot of children's ministries, children's ministries through church, um, like vacation Bible schools and teaching churches and coming alongside them to help them start Sunday schools, um, also providing Bibles in churches and also um, training churches and different things. Um, so we work with a lot of local partnering churches. Um, Jesus is no stranger to Rwanda. Uh, the Rwandans in general love, love the Lord. They love, um, and, and most would claim to be Christians. And our, the part that um, is so important is having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, not just knowing of him and not just believing there's a God, but having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So um, the Lord has blessed us in the last several years with many different types of ministries from vocational training for women. Um, and currently we have, for the, we're in our third year of having an early learning center. We have 150 children in our early learning center. We're trying to build a school. We um, have broken ground and we have land. We've broken ground on a property for a 16 classroom facility. And um, we are praying that in God's time and when he wants, he's going to um, supply that need so that we can continue to reach out. Um, in a school setting, you have such an amazing opportunity to just pour the love of God into children every single day in all facets of life and reach out into their families because families get involved when, with their children. And so um, those are some of the, a few of the ministries we do. We also get the privilege to care for abandoned babies um, when, when those needs arise. And what a privilege and a gift. We just had one little boy that we were caring for. He got a family yesterday, and he'd, we'd been, he'd been with us for the past yeah. couple months. Praise God. And um, so God's been good, and um, that's a little bit. About oh, so, us, oh, but it's great. 10 years in about two minutes. Well, so. it, 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 impressive. That was very impressive. I can tell you've done this once or twice before. But but one of the things that uh, over this last year as we got to know Laura better and, and, and her ministry it was was this connection across the generations. And you've already heard that with, with children that have been abandoned and, and how God is, is, is working through her ministry to, to help bring them into new new homes, new families, how they are working with kids in, in, in school settings and church settings. And, and that's something that we as Christ Church Nashville are so passionate about. That's something that I believe with my whole heart that God is leading us into as a local church more in the year uh, ahead of us is how much more are we reaching kids right here in our neighborhood and not just here, but how can we partner with, with those that God is, is leading up and, and, and raising up around the world to do the same thing. And so isn't it beautiful to see how God is connecting lives all over the world for his purposes, especially when it comes to children and the generations as they, as they rise up. And so we are honored to, to share in this with you, uh, even across the ocean in this way and so another thing that you said Laura was how uh, in Rwanda um, everybody is a Christian at least says they are right and, and that's something we can relate to uh, certainly in, in this part of the US but the challenge today before us is even if we think we're a Christian culturally what does it mean for us to actually truly follow Jesus Christ as a disciple yeah. and your heart beat for that and what you're doing with with men and women and children and everybody of all ages in Rwanda that's something that resonates with our heart as well as a, as a local church and so we're honored to share with you in that way too so so we have you today with us it's gonna be in the Mission Center right that's out right. here 
in the foyer. Uh, take a right right before you get to the doors. She'll be there after the service. Uh, any other ways that, that our folks can get to know you better and, and reach you? Sure. We're on Facebook with Love Alive International. We're on Instagram, Love Alive Inc. Um, and of course, I'll be in the back with some little cards that have our information on them. Um, we would love to, to connect with you and know you in a more personal way. Thank you so much for Excellent. your support. Excellent. Well, let's pray. Let's pray for Laura if we could. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful. We are grateful for your blessing upon this ministry, upon Laura and her family, Lord. Continue to lead them, guide them, provide for them generously, Lord. Uh, continue to protect them. And Lord, we are just grateful that uh, 13 years ago, she answered your call uh, to pick up from, from Tennessee to move to Rwanda. And Lord, the family that you've blessed her with uh, and the family of, of faith that you've blessed her with, it's amazing to hear more of Laura's story and your faithfulness in it, Lord. So continue to bless her, continue to bless her family, continue to bless this ministry, uh, Lord, that you will draw more and more and more people of all ages to yourself. And so, Lord, thank you for the privilege we have of, of partnering with her, of walking with her. Lord, we are grateful for what you are doing in Rwanda, what you are doing in Nashville, what you are doing around the world, Lord God. Uh, we know that the light of Christ still shines and the darkness cannot, will not ever extinguish it. And we are grateful and honored to be a part of what you are doing in such a time as this. So, Lord, we're grateful for this day. Bless Laura in her time with us and what she has left in the States before she returns back to Rwanda. We're grateful, Lord. May your blessing be upon her in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Thank you again, Lord. Thank you again. You me down? <laughs> Either way, thank you. Well, at this time... As uh, our ushers prepare, we're going to uh, give our tithes and offerings. And I, I wanted to take just a, a brief, brief moment to, to update you. Uh, you see on the screen different ways that you can give. And so as you're preparing, uh, certainly we can give online through our website at ccnash.org slash give. You can text to give at 615-205-1098. And then also, of course, here in the sanctuary, you can uh, give as we will pass the, uh, the offering bags here in but a moment. But I wanted you to know that um, uh, this year, as, as we are uh, faithfully giving, I want you to know how much we appreciate your faithfulness in giving, Christ Church. We are doing uh, well, but we can always... We can always do better. And I'm just being honest with you and being truthful with you. Our giving is, is on pace for what we had hoped this year, but our expenses, uh, even though our staff has been so diligent and our ministry leaders have been so diligent to limit spending anywhere that we can, uh, sometimes things happen, like you need a new boiler, uh, for example, uh, things like that, that that aren't exactly uh, uh, in the budget always every year and, and things that aren't always cheap, for sure. But but these are things that that... God's faithfulness is being shown through God's people. And it's not just about how do we help maintain the building or how do we help fund ministry programs. I want you to understand that when we give out of thanksgiving, when we give out of, out of grateful hearts, responding to the generosity of God in our own generosity, God responds to that. And it's not about manipulation. It's not about trying to get God to do what we want God to do. It's no, something happens when we take a posture of thankfulness, of gratitude and recognizing how much we have been given. And I know, I know firsthand that some of you here right now, you're, you're looking for a job. Some of you right now are, are in difficult places financially. And because other people give, when, when those uh, opportunities come for the church to help provide, and, and, and that's what we do through our benevolence ministry, is sometimes we pay electric bills. Sometimes we help people who are stuck in between with rent this month. All those kinds of things are how the church is meant to care for one another. And some of us know what it's like to be on the receiving end of that at one point in our lives, and then to be in a place where we can give and give generously and abundantly at another time in our lives. I want you to know all of that is right and good and okay. That's how God has brought us together as a family of faith, knowing that there are times we are, it's like that circle of muskox, right? Sometimes you're on the outside protecting the vulnerable ones in the middle. Sometimes you gotta be in the middle. That's why it's so important to be a part of a local family of faith, to commit yourself to a, to a church in this way, knowing that we're gonna commit to walking together, not just with those two beautiful families this morning that we dedicated little Salem and little Lucy, but from the youngest to the oldest among us, we walk together no matter what life may bring. And so when you give and you give generously, that's what this is for. As we reach out in our community, as we take care of one another, as we expect God to continue to move. I want you to know 
We're doing everything we can to, to, to be diligent and faithful in paying off uh, what remains of the, the mortgage, which is 6.7 million. Seems like a lot, but it's not a lot compared to what it started out at, at 18 million several years ago. <laughs> But the sooner we get that knocked out, the sooner we can put more and more and more into other things that we need to do for the sake of ministry. I'm so passionate about that. I'm so committed to that. And I know so many of you are as well. So thank you for that. So as you pray today and moving forward, Lord, how may you have us give? How would you and your household give? I want you to seek the Lord and the Lord's guidance on that. As Christians, we are free. Many of us tithe, but that's not a New Testament law. That's something that many Christians take upon themselves to say, let me, let me start with this and see what happens. And we can fill the rest of the hour with testimony about how God is faithful in the midst of that. But that's not a law. That's not a, a New Testament requirement. It's something you just ask the Lord, how would you have me give? Because when it gets really fun is when God moves you beyond that 10% and you give even more. You can't outgive God and the blessings that God gives. It's not about the money that, 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 that we receive. It's about how are we part of what God is doing in the world to bless God's people. Those who know they are and those who don't yet know they belong to the people of God. So as our ushers come forward, would you pray with me? Father, we thank you. We give you praise for who you are. You are such a loving, gracious, all-knowing, all-good, such holy and righteousness. All of these things, Lord God, fail to fully describe who you are. And so, Father, we come now this morning with glad and grateful hearts, Lord, and we prepare to give as an act of worship, giving out of the abundance or even, Lord, giving out of what may seem to us as, as lack. Lord, we trust in you. And we know that as we give, you multiply our meager gifts for the sake of your kingdom purposes. And so, Lord, we pray that as stewards, nothing we have is ours, that our material resources, our, our human resources, our relationships, our families, all of it, it belongs to you, Lord, and you call us to care for uh, these gifts and one another, Lord God, by the power of the Holy Spirit alive in us. And so, Lord, we freely give back to you what you have given to us that again, you may use it for your purposes. Sanctify it, Lord. Lead the hearts and minds of those who are in charge of, of stewarding this on behalf of this local congregation. Lord, we thank you for the wise men and women who serve on our finance team, who serve on our board, who serve on our staff. Lord, we thank you for the ministry leaders uh, who give of their time and, and effort, Lord, as volunteers. We are so thankful, Father, for all those who are a part of, of stewarding the resources you provide. So Lord, we ask you now, speak to our hearts how you would have us give and let us step out boldly in obedience, trusting you, knowing that you own the cattle on a thousand hills. There is no such thing as lack with you. If we trust you and step out in faith, we are grateful and we love you and we give now with gratitude and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you as you give.
you're able, would you stand with me? For the reading of God's word upon which our sermon today, which is gonna be a children's sermon for everybody. These are all, you guys ready? You guys ready? Are you, are you sure? You need a nap? You need a snack? What do you need? You good? Okay, all right, we're ready, we're ready, okay. So based on 1 Corinthians 15, starting on verse 20 through 26, we've been working our way in this season of Eastertide. Today is the fourth Sunday after Easter and talking about resurrection and what that means, Christ's resurrection and what that means for our own spiritually now and, and, and physically on that great day yet to come. And so hear now what Paul has to say continuing in this famous chapter describing exactly that, beginning with verse 20. But in fact, Paul says, Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first of a great harvest of all who have died. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man. Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. But there is an order to this resurrection. Christ was raised as the first of the harvest. Then all who belong to Christ will be raised when he comes back. After that, the end will come when he will turn the kingdom over to God the Father, having destroyed every ruler and authority and power. For Christ must reign until he humbles all his enemies beneath his feet. And the last enemy to be destroyed is death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, we give you thanks for the truth of your word. Now we ask that you give us ears to hear and hearts to receive, Lord. Open our eyes to where we have been blind, that we might see your work, your work in us, your work in this world, Lord God, and where your life has broken into a world that has known sin and death. Father, we are grateful for this opportunity. Lord, bless us as we hear you speak through our children, and we are Privilege that we get to spend this time celebrating your word and the truth of it with them. Guide us now in this time together in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen. All right, come on up here, guys. Come up and join me right up here, right on the steps. Right on the steps. Okay, grab a seat. Anybody right in here, guys? We'll be right in here. Come on up, come on up. All right, I'm gonna grab a stool. So come on up here, guys. Come on from all over the place. I might grab that mic, Pastor Greg, if that's okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. <laughs> don't, ha- don't have to if you don't want to. That's okay. <laughs> Sometimes it gets kind of scary, I know. Okay. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Can you guys see me okay? You guys see me all right? Okay, okay. We're going to share a, a story today. And before we get to that, though, out of, uh, how many of you guys, did any of you guys have this at home? I the- have that. Do you have this one? The Jesus Storybook Bible? This is yours, Zeke, so thanks for letting me use it. I have it. Some of you have it? This is a great one. When we, when we dedicate babies here at Christ Church, so like uh, Salem and Lucy today, they, they both got one of these. And, and man, if, if this is the Jesus Storybook Bible. So moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas, this is, this is my favorite children's Bible uh, right now. It, I love the way it tells the stories uh, from Scripture. And uh, it, it's, it's beautiful illustrations, so many great things. So today we're going to talk a little bit from, from that in a moment. But before we do, uh, I, we're going to talk a little bit about, you guys ever heard of this guy named Adam? Yes. Okay. And you ever heard of this guy named Jesus? Yes. Okay. The good, good deal. We're, we're two for two so far. All right. So part of what we're going to talk about today is how both Adam and Jesus represent all of us. Okay. And to help us understand that, because sometimes that can be hard to, to understand. We, we, I, I want to show you some pictures and I want to see if you guys know who some of these faces are. Okay. Do we have those? Can we show uh, the first one here? Do you guys know who that is? Joe Biden. That is Joe Biden, otherwise known as the president of the United States. Right. Okay. So you know who he is, right? How about this guy? The next one. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. That, very good. So that's Donald Trump. He's also a former president of the United States, or is a former president of the United States? Okay. How about this next guy? Okay. Now, now we're seeing, we're, we're stretching you a little bit, Go, going a little bit further back in time since some of you were born. All right. So yes. So Barack Obama, who also president of the United States. Okay. So now I'm going to really throw you back. This is only some of us were alive when these guys were around. How about the next one? 
about that. Hey, very good. Do you remember him, Abraham Lincoln? That's good. Okay. Abraham Lincoln, you guys remember him? He was, does anybody remember what number president he was? Here's some trivia for you. Oh, say, th- say it again and add one. Fifth, 16th? There it is, 16. Very good. Yeah, 16th president of the United States. Very good. Such an important figure in our history. Okay, and then we're going to go back. I think there's only a couple of us here that remember when this guy was president. How about back to this one? Anybody remember him? Who is that? George Washington. George Washington, that's right, that's right. So, so what do all of these particular men, what do they all have in common? What do they all have in common? They're all presidents. Very good, they were all presidents. Now what does the president do? This is, this is good, I should ask all of us this. What, what do you think? He rules the world. He rules the world. <laughs> some, some might think so, some might think so. What, what do you think, what do presidents do? He helps make the law. He helps make the law. He, he, he helps those who do that, for sure. Yeah. What else? What else do you think? What else do president, presidents do? He runs the state. He runs the state, the, the national state. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. What else? That's okay. We'll come back to you. Come back to you. What do you think? What else do presidents do? He, he makes the world safe forever. Makes the world safe forever, or at least for a moment, right? That's right. Okay. That's good. What do you think? What do presidents do? He loves the people. He loves the people? Yeah, we hope so, right? That's good, that's good. Those are all great answers. Well, one of the things that, in addition to that, that I want to help us understand is that if the president goes to, say he goes to some big meeting somewhere else in the world, who does he represent? Or could be she someday. Who does he or she, the president, represent? Who is it? Do you know? Have I got an idea? What do you think? Say that again? God? Well, not, not God necessarily. That's a good guess, though. That's good. I understand. We'll, we'll, we'll touch base on that. Who do you think? Who does the president represent? What do you think? The president cooks hot dogs. Okay. <laughs> he might be cooking hot dogs for everybody else. What do you think? I don't know. Okay. Anybody got any idea? Because he is the president of the... Un- what? Of the what? He's the president of the United States. Okay, right. Where do we live? We live in Nashville, yes. We live in Tennessee, yes, which are both in, help me out, little Zeke, what do you got? Both in what? United States. United States. So that means, good job, bud. That means that when the president goes somewhere, he represents who? Our country. Our country, which means who? United States. Yeah, United States, which means who, Reagan? God. Well... (laughs) Maybe, but does it mean, it means you and me, right? And all of us, right? So the president, he represents all of us when he goes somewhere and and when he represents who the United States people are. So listen to this. This is how I want you to understand. Adam represents not just Americans, not just people from the United States. Adam represents all people everywhere for all time. And Jesus represents Adam in a new way. And so I want you to understand, as Paul was writing to these people in Corinth, remember what he said, right? He said that that all have, have died in Adam, but those who have their faith in Christ will be raised to new life in Christ. And it's so important to recognize what he said, because just as everyone dies all in Adam... He said, those who belong to Christ will be made alive. Well, what in the world does that mean? That's the question. So what I want to read to you is from the storybook Bible here, something that comes from Genesis chapter 3. Anybody know that chapter? Have you ever heard about that? Okay. So we're going to have some pictures on the screens. So you might not be able to read the words on the screens, but hopefully you can see some of these these pictures. So if you want to look at the book, you can see it here. But I'm going to read it for us. and, and, And so listen to this. See if this story sounds familiar to you. Okay. So this is called The Terrible Lie from Genesis 3. Adam and Eve lived happily together in their beautiful new home, and everything was perfect for a while, until the day when everything went wrong. God had a horrible enemy. His name was Satan. And Satan had once been the most beautiful angel, but he didn't want to be just an angel. He wanted to be God. He grew proud and evil and full of hate. And God had to send him out of heaven. Satan was seething with anger and looking for a way to hurt God. 
If you wanted to stop God's plan, stop this love story between God and God's people right there. So he disguised himself as a serpent and waited in the garden. Now, God had given Adam and Eve only one rule. Don't eat the fruit on that tree, that one tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, God told them. Because if you do, you will think that you know everything. You will stop trusting me. And then death and sadness and tears will come. You see, God knew that if these humans ate the fruit, they would think they didn't need him. And they would try to make themselves happy without him. But God knew there was no such thing as happiness without him, and life without him wouldn't be life at all. As soon as the serpent saw his chance, he slithered silently up to Eve. Does God really love you? Yeah. Yeah. The serpent asked. If he does, why won't he let you eat the nice, juicy, delicious fruit? Poor you. Perhaps God doesn't want you to be happy. The snake's words hissed into their ears and sunk down deep into their hearts like poison. Does God love me? Eve wondered. Suddenly, she didn't know anymore. Just trust me, the serpent whispered. You don't need God. One small taste and that's all, and you'll be happier than you could ever dream. Eve picked the fruit and ate some, and Adam ate some too. And a terrible lie came into the world. It would never leave. It would live on in every human heart, whispering to every one of God's children, God doesn't love me. And it wasn't a dream, it was a nightmare. A dove flew from Adam's hand. A deer darted in a thicket. It was as if they were frightened of something. A chill was in the air. Something strange was happening. They had always been naked, but now they felt naked and wrong. And they didn't want anyone to see them. So they hid. Later that evening, as God was taking his walk, he called to them, children. Usually Adam and Eve loved to hear God's voice and would run to him. But this time, they ran away from him and hid in the shadows. Where are you? God called. Hiding, Adam said. We're afraid of you. Did you eat the fruit I told you not to eat? God asked them. Adam said, Eve made me do it. That's just like a man. <laughs> what have you done? God asked. Eve said, the serpent made me do it. And terrible pain came into God's heart. His children hadn't just broken the one rule, they had broken God's heart. They had broken their wonderful relationship with him and now he knew everything else would break. God's creation would start to unravel and come undone and go wrong. From now on, everything would die, even though it was all supposed to last forever. You see, sin had come into God's perfect world and it would never leave. God's children would be always running away from him and trying to hide in the dark. Their hearts would break now and would never work properly again. God couldn't let his children live forever, not in this kind of pain, not without him. There was only one way to protect them. You will have to leave the garden now, God told his children, his eyes filling with tears. This is no longer your true home. It's not the place for you anymore. But before they left the garden, God made clothes for his children to cover them. He gently clothed them and then he sent them along on a long, long journey out of the garden, out of their home. Well, in another story, it would be all over and that would have been the end. But this isn't just any story, is it? Not in this story. God loved his children too much to let the story end there. Even though he knew he would suffer, God had a plan, a magnificent dream. One day, he would get his children back. One day, he would make the world their perfect home again. And one day, he would wipe away every tear from their eyes. You see, no matter what, in spite of everything, God would love his children with a never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. 
And though they would forget him and run from him, deep in their hearts, God's children would miss him always and long for him, lost children yearning for their home. Before they left the garden, God whispered a promise to Adam and Eve. It will not always be so. I will come to rescue you. And when I do, I'm going to do battle against the snake. I'll get rid of the sin and the dark and the sadness you let in. I'm coming back for you. And he would. One day, God himself would come. Has he come? What do you guys think? Did God fulfill his promise? We sang, we sang earlier that God always keeps his promises. And we read that in the scripture that Pastor Greg led us in from Psalm 145, that God always keeps his promises. Did God keep that promise that he would come? Yeah. He did, he did. And he's, he's gonna come back again, but he came, when did he come? How did he fulfill that promise? Remember we were talking about Adam, now we need to talk about who? Who is it? Jesus. Say that again, say it again. Jesus! That's right, so when it comes to trusting in what God will do to fulfill his promises. He did fulfill his promise when he came as Jesus. And so when sin entered the world, so too came suffering and death. But then when God would send Jesus, that's what we read again, what Paul has to say, talking about how one day God himself would come. What has he done dealing with sin and death and the, the devil? How has Jesus dealt with that? One set of scriptures I want us to read briefly. Romans chapter five, Paul talks about this in another letter to another church. And I've got it on the screen here. See what he has to say. When Adam sinned, Paul said, sin entered the world as we just heard. And Adam's sin brought death so that death spread to everyone for everyone's sin. Anybody ever had a cold? And you brought that cold home? What happens? You're the first one with your cold, but pretty soon what happens? Wait, if you bring a cold home, does anybody else get sick? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what do you think? Everybody else gets Everybody sick. gets it, right? That's kind of what happens. So if, 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 if Adam is our ancient, 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 ancient parent in this way, and all of us in some way come from those first human beings, and something happened when sin became a part of this life, we, we receive that in a, some way. We're born into this world, and guess what? Before, when you were an itty-bitty baby, before you could ever do anything to anybody else, guess what? Sin affects you. It impacts you. From the, even those who love you the most, there is sin in this world that, that impacts us. We're victims of sin, and then we become those who also do it. And so Adam is a symbol, Paul says, a representation of Christ who is yet to come. As Adam represented us, so too does Jesus. But there's a great difference, Paul says, between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. For the sin of this one man, Adam, brought death to many. But... Even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many through the other man, Jesus Christ. And the result of God's gracious gift is very different from the result of that one man's sin. Do you know how? For Adam's sin led to our condemnation, led to our separation from God. But God's free gift that God gives of himself in Jesus leads to our being made right with God even though we are guilty of many sins. For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness. For all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So what I want you guys to understand is that what the Bible teaches us is that all of us are born into the way of Adam. We do things wrong and we hurt each other and we hurt God and we hurt ourselves and we're born into this world that is broken where people don't always love each other the way that they should and they don't always do the right thing and we live for ourselves instead of others first. We're born into that world and it shapes us and affects us even before we're aware it's happening and sometimes we get really, really hurt and we end up being people who hurt others because of it. But God because of his love for you, because of his, his grace and his goodness. When Eve asked that question, does God love me? What's the answer? Yes. yes. Say it really loud. Does God love you? Yes. yes. God loves you so much that he would come in and through the one we call Jesus the Christ to rescue us, to save us from sin, to save us from death. That even though these bodies might, might die, our spirits, we live with him and one day our bodies will be raised as well. 
But as Paul says, when we will be raised in that resurrection that is to come, when Jesus comes back once more to the earth, okay? So what a blessing that is. We are born into Adam, but we are called to be born again into Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Let's pray, guys. Father, we are so thankful for your faithfulness, so thankful for your goodness, how you are the one who has made a way where there seemed to be no way. When there was not uh, a way to life, Lord God, you made it in and through Jesus Christ. Lord, just as our ancient father and mother, Adam and Eve, represent us in the way of brokenness and sin, now, Lord God, the second Adam, the last Adam, the one who is for all time, the the ultimate human, the one who is human and divine, Jesus Christ, you have brought us now into relationship again with you in his righteousness, his holiness, the one who would live for you, O God, as we would want to but never could. We are thankful for that gift and that blessing that you allow us to receive by faith that we may walk in freedom, that we may receive your love and be healed and transformed, that sin and death and the devil would not have the final say. So Lord, we receive that resurrection life today. And if anyone here, Lord God, is is hearing that for the first time and is just hearing the story of the terrible lie and yet your answer to it, your hope uh, and life given in Christ for the first time, Lord, move in hearts Allow us to be born again, Lord God, born out of Adam and born again into Christ. Lord, have your way in hearts that are hearing that right now. Have your way in hearts that need to be rededicated to that right now, hearts that need to be strengthened in that right now, oh God. We trust you and you alone in it, for you are the way and the truth and the life. Lord, thank you for these children. Bless them. May they continue to grow in their knowledge of you and their understanding of you and their experience of you in their lives. May they grow to know you and love you more fully all the days of their lives, Lord. May your hand be upon them. May they be marked by you and your spirit, O God, as your children now and forevermore, even before they are ours. We give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey guys, when we're all done, we're going to, Pastor Greg is going to lead us in communion, but when we're all done at the end of the service, you make sure you come back right up here up front because Big Zeke over there, raise your hand, Big Zeke. He's going to have a lollipop for each and every one of you. Okay. So don't, don't tackle him and just mow him down. Just be patient, but he's going to set you up at the end of the service. Okay. So don't forget, come on back after we're all done and Big Zeke will take care of you. Okay. All right. Thank you guys. You're so great. Give them all a hand. Thank you all. Well done, well done. All right, good, thanks, sir. Well, as we prepare to share in communion together today, I'm going to invite our servers to come and receive their trays. And as they're coming to receive their trays, they're going to take their positions. And while our servers are coming to receive their trays, we are reminded so much of the reason why we are coming to this moment of sharing the Eucharist, the Lord's body and blood represented in the bread and in the juice. We are loved by God. The question that Pastor Ben asked the kids was, does God love us? And so I'm going to ask you, in this moment, with all that God knows about you, knows about us, can we truly say in our hearts, that God loves us. Service, you may come. Service, please come. Receive your trays. God loves us. And we are reminded of that love each time that we join together at this table. I'm also reminded that this is the table. And I share this with you as a reminder that this is the table of the Lord. It is not the table of Christ church or any local church. When we share in communion, we share with the body of Christ universal. And not just those that are still living in different countries around the world, but the great communion of God's family extends from eternity past to eternity future. And we are right in the middle of that. And I know that as we prepare to share this morning that some of us are taking communion today and we remember that loved one, that brother or sister that is not physically with us today. And the loss and the absence of their presence can sometimes make this moment a sad moment. But the beauty of the communion table reminds us that we are in communion with those who have gone before us.
Amen. And we have the hope that one day at that great marriage supper, that Jesus will preside over the communion and that those who have gone before us will be there to share it with us. Isn't that good? That is good news. As we prepare our hearts, would you join with me as we pray the prayer of contrition? Jesus told us, the the disciples, the apostles tell us that when we come to the table, we are to examine ourselves. So would you join me now as we pray the prayer of contrition? Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. As a minister of the gospel, it is my privilege to remind you that if you have prayed that prayer in the sincerity of your heart, asking God to forgive you, he forgives and he forgets. Wonderful gift that we don't quite have yet. He forgives and he forgets it. Cast us away as far as the east is from the west. So in that forgiveness today, as our servers come, they will come to your row, pass the tray down. You will receive the elements. We're going to ask that you would hold on to the elements and we will receive them together.
ask you to do is please stand as we prepare to receive the communion together. That song beautifully reminds us that in all the ways that we needed him to be perfect, he was. <laughs> when we look over our lives and we realize how often we mess things up, and how so badly we needed someone to do it right and to be perfect. He's perfect, the song says, in all of his ways. Isn't that good? Today, many of you on your road received the elements, both from one of our adult leaders and our youth. And in the body of Christ, God chooses to use all of us no matter our age, no matter of our backgrounds, when we accept Christ as our Lord, he welcomes us to come. In the communion table, Jesus tells us, whosoever will, let him come. And so Father, we thank you for these elements of bread and juice, the fruit of the vine and the grain of the field, that you have created and that human hands have prepared, we ask now that these elements may be for us the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we remember him, as he instructed us to do, Lord, may these gifts, the gifts of God for the people of God, may we receive them with joy and by them and through them be reminded that we are a part of your family, that your love has covered our sins God, thank you for the life, death, and resurrection of our elder brother, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible tells us that on that Passover night, Jesus shared the Passover meal with his disciples. And in that meal, he took bread, bread that was on the table in which they had shared the common meal, the Passover meal. And he gave thanks to the Father. And after giving thanks for the bread, he broke it. And he gave a piece to each of his disciples and he told them, this is my body, my body that is given for you. They didn't quite understand what that meant, but they would later that night into that morning when he was arrested and beaten and crucified. That body, that body that not only was bruised for our transgressions, wounded for our iniquities, but that body that was also resurrected from the grave. That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the Bible tells us, will raise our mortal body. Remember, Jesus said, as you eat it, let us eat together. Thank you, Lord. After the same manner, he took the cup, giving thanks to the Father, he told his disciples, this is my blood, the new covenant in my blood that has been shed for the remission, for the forgiveness of your sins and the sins of many. He told them and he tells us as often as we drink of this vine, we do so in remembrance of him. And as I mentioned earlier, he told his disciples that he would not partake of the vine until that day that he would receive it together with us in his kingdom. Remember, he said, that because of this blood, our sins are forgiven and forgotten. Forgiven and forgotten. Let us receive together. Thank you, Father. Would you join me now as we pray this prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray? Lord's Prayer, you will see the words on the screen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As his representatives on this planet, as we go from this place into the world, into this week, 
whatever we may face, let us remember who we are and whomst we are. We are the children of God who are deeply loved and forever forgiven. So receive this blessing now as we prepare to go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to smile upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you, upon your home, upon your family, and bless you with his peace. Let us go now and serve the Lord. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.